Today is November 7, 2050, and tomorrow Burma is going to live an historical event. For the first time since 1960, the people will get to vote. After 50 years of dictatorship, unwarranted arrests, torture and impunity, they will be able to speak up at last and maybe even change Burma's path. Five years ago, the military junta decided to put an end to its dictatorship and organized elections to elect a civilian government. Unfortunately, the polling process was a shame and the military leaders kept the power. The international community rushed to congratulate Burma and re-established diplomatic and economic ties with the junta leaders. This year, the Burmese government swore that elections would be fair and the results would be respected. Under the International Community Monitor, they even upgraded their election system to prevent fraud. Burmese people, though disrespectful, wished to believe that democracy could settle its thanks to these elections. Previous five years, 2010 to 2015, under the president of the Insane. Even though like the, he declared to fight against poverty, be better stay poor, or Udin Singh government can also the problem of land grabbing cases. Also, political freedom is still questionable. Restricting on freedom of expression, freedom of assemblies. Also, therefore, many students were detained. They were cut down very brutally. The way they, they, they solve the problem is not much different with the military regime. All the recent fightings and the uh, breaking promises they made are very good examples of they don't have uh, you know, strong political will to maintain peace in country. And this is one of the reasons, you know, like uh, we could never able to build trust so that's why it's really, really difficult. So I just uh, don't know how to say it. And it might be the same to the international community as well, because like uh, even for us, you know, like uh, speaking the same language, knowing the context, you know, it's very difficult to deal with us. So maybe uh, for the international community, they just don't understand what kind of theories, practice, and you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> Concepts might be our walk in, in this country. <laughs> One of the recent successes that Myanmar is very proud of is a significant improvement in international relations compared to the past. Having good relations with the United States is very important for Myanmar in attracting foreign investment. We want U.S. investors to trust Myanmar. And we believe that the more the two countries are in contact with each other, the better they will understand and trust each other. Relations between Myanmar and the U.S. are currently very good. The U.S. has lifted some economic sanctions on Myanmar, even though some investors still have a negative image of our country because of incorrect information coming from the opposition and from those with negative ideologies. A lot of people are... Uh, things about our government is, you know, like uh, they don't have capacity and actually not. Uh, the military government are uh, here in Myanmar. They are the cleverest government in the world. Nobody could understand them and nobody could, you know, compete them actually. <laughs> A second major achievement is that our administration has been making progress in ending the armed conflict, which Myanmar has been experiencing for nearly 60 years, ever since the country's independence. Our government has been working to establish peace among armed ethnic groups, and most of them have agreed to a ceasefire. For the past five years, the government did everything in its power to show Burma as a free and flourishing nation while oppressing the people and manufacturing consent. The military still control 78% of the parliament seats. 
but tomorrow everything could change. Ninety-two political parties were allowed to run and campaigned for two months. The USDP rode the xenophobic bandwagon and established itself as the sole party able to protect the Buddhist religion and race. The National League for Democracy is the historical opposition party. Its leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, became an international icon of Burmese resistance. In 1991, she even received the Nobel Peace Prize. Nicknamed Mother Sue, she represents People's Hope, from whom she embodies the democracy and the end of military oppression. This popular enthusiasm puts the NLD as lead favorite in polls. Tomorrow we are expecting very good results, more than 70 percent. However, its stance on issues stays extremely vague and generic. Well, national reconciliation, economic develop, development and peace. Process. Other political parties' campaigns seldom vary from these topics and haven't made concrete proposition either. For many of them, these elections constitute their first experience in politics and even though they lack funds, they did all they could to enjoy this new era of freedom. I hope yeah, after election it's gonna be changed yeah, everything is yeah, also it's gonna be yeah, okay more than before mainly yeah, human rights <laughs> We're November 8th, and since 5 a.m., restless Burmese are queuing up outside of the polling stations. They are extremely calm. One gets the feeling that they are afraid to make a wrong move, causing the elections to be called off. Our choose. The significant, very unusual event today is Sinia and the younger people. Every people in different ages were gathering together beforehand the opening of the polling station. They are with high energy and you know high motivation. Ah. For real change, let's go for NLD. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone's surprise, election day went well. Burma didn't have such free elections in over 50 years. European observers noted that in 95% of polling stations observed, the process went well or very well. However, all mentioned irregularities happened and that the election process was not fair. This is the first historical elections that don't Rohingya are, are stripped of the right to participate in the elections, right to vote, and right to uh, uh, run in the elections as a first time in history. All eligible voters in 2010 elections, the Rohingya are not in the voter list now. And all the candidates uh, from the Rohingya community and other many from the Muslims are rejected in the election registration process. If we go to the free and fair, we have to look at the, the legal framework, the freedom of movement. Let's say and some of the party have a restriction by the, the local militia group and some of the parties has been in and then prevented by the local authority or something like that. So it is some of freedom movement. And then this kind of the disenfranchisement of these. There's a lot of people based on the decision of these, the temporary card holders. So, and then, and then the legal framework itself. So I think if we go to these 
the broader concept, the free and fair is, I think, I'm not sure. There are some incidents. Some crews are trying to do some frog things. Actually, advanced boating, boats from soldiers and police. International community cannot monitor advanced boating. And also boatalists, they cannot do anything for boatalists. I think uh, internationally and domestically, very few people only expect that kind of result. These irregularities didn't change the election outcome. NLD wins in a landslide victory with 78 percent of votes. It can therefore choose its president and form a government. Despite five years of trying to alter their image, the party representing the Janta heirs suffered a huge defeat. They received only 8% of the votes. What is clear to us as an ordinary citizen is that they want a new government. That is very clear. So even the ethnic areas, they just vote for one single big body. Ethnic minorities representing 40% of the population were represented by 60 parties. But they didn't even succeed in convincing their communities and won only 11% of the votes. Many people vote for, for NLD, not because they trust. But you know, they really don't like uh, this uh, uh, ESTP anymore. They, they feel that uh, local parties will, will not be able to go against uh, ESTP. But they don't know about the uh, absence that cannot be a president. Only one ethnic party won 4.5% of the votes the Arakan National Party, an anti-Muslim and independentist party. The Muslim minority represents between 4 and 10 percent of the Burmese population, but was represented by only 28 candidates. None were elected. Now we assume that there is no Muslims and no representative of the Muslims in the parliament in Burmese history. I think this is a very dangerous step that this country is taken for the democratic elections and excluding minorities and not having protections of the minority rights in the elections. Despite inequalities, joy spread all over the country. Burmese can't stop talking about this long hope victory. Even minorities are relieved to go on from USDP. Burma is getting ready for a new era where Aung San Suu Kyi will lead a key but sensitive role. She will have to show a strong will and influence, but most importantly, to be willing to compromise. At present, whether we like it or not, Dong San Suji is the most popular among the people. Mm. Actually, people really want to give a chance to Dong San Suji to do something. And Dong San Suji said she was set up reconciliation government. It means that like she will invite USDP, and she will invite uh, ethnic parties. So that is a good sign. So because we need such kind of uh, government. And then if we can create civil and military relationship, that will be better for the future. Military are 25% in the parliament. So it's sort of the veto power. So whatever the majority and your whatever government have. The, without consent of the military, uh, uh, any uh, changes, any amendment would not be happening. The military have uh, set the rules, you know, they select the playground they would like to uh, play, and you know, like we all, including the NLD, you know, like we all have to uh, play the games that the games they want. 
no? with the set rules and environment they made. And unless uh, we people and the uh, NLD could set the rules of the games and the ground we would like to play, no? so I don't think that uh, it will going to be a meaningful democratic society. It seems that everybody have to, you know, like that, compromise with the uh, big guys, you know, always what they want. Since a very long time, I mean, the, the retired military, or somehow the military has retired from the military position and then and transferred to the, the civilian position, like, so I think before the 2010 elections, there are a lot of movement from the military to the especially like the general administration office. So these are not the political position. These are bureaucratic positions. They coordinate. It has to change. The only way is that we have to wait for their retirement and then we have to change or something like that. So it's need to take time. Government should like to take an action to those who committed human rights violations, whoever maybe soldiers or policemen or ordinary people or even though they are saying no one is above the law including our society but law is law I think there are good things and also bad things I think with this uh, NLD becoming the government but what the NLD is not saying yet it's about the rights of the ethnic peoples so far. Our division is the, according to the ethnic city, no? Ethnic city. Then these NLD people they cannot represent us, especially in the kind of Navy doll level, no? So they don't understand us. I mean like Aung San Suu Kyi, she is the Nobel Peace Prize uh, laureate. And she's still not talking about the peace process and he and she yeah she always said I will be involved in peace process only when both parties invite me and then she's waiting and waiting waiting until now. We've been forgotten for so long and even now we get some attention from the international communities but uh, it seems they are so optimistic towards only the elections result and I'm really worried that you know their eyes will <laughs> not see all the uh, grievances that our ethnic minorities are facing in Myanmar. If Suji or any person from NLD says something stupid about the armed groups who are not signing the NCA yet then this will, this kind of statement will give more legitimacy to the army to increase the fighting. Yeah, and the international community also know they, they are doing the right things, and then you will be them. You know, one thing I'm worried is that they will definitely have some problem with the army. That problem will definitely uh, affect peace process. 2008 constitution provided the most power to commander in chief. Therefore, we need to change 2008 constitution, and president must have the power to command to the home Fed minister and all armed forces. So other, otherwise, it would be difficult to have peace in the country if the president has no power. If there is no war and conflict, there is no legitimacy for them. No? To get more budget for the military, uh, uh, how to say, more recruitment and getting more power, they have to have war and conflict in the country. If you look at all the uh, conflict area, it's, it's uh, strongly uh, linked to the foreign yeah. direct investment. It's, it's right, yeah. And no wonder they are trying to protect the, uh, the investment that 
uh, they deal with the Chinese and the others investors. No, so it seems that instead of like protecting our uh, uh, its own citizens, they are protecting uh, the the investor and their own uh, benefits, because like a lot of those investment normally uh, didn't go for the people services. No, so like. Uh, it it goes all to the military or they are personal. The military, they don't care because they are the one who is uh, having absolute power, wealth, and nearly all the business in their hand. They don't care any uh, sanctions or blacklist. <laughs> You know, our, our local medias are also owned by the cronies, no? <laughs> we believe it is essential that businesses contribute to the improvement of Myanmar society. For us, doing business is not solely about profits. It's about love for our country, people, and helping improve living standards and quality of life. They are focusing more on what majority uh, readers want to read right <laughs> yeah and and our medias are, are also very new and fresh so yeah they need to grow a lot like medias but also political parties Burma's democracy has to grow up to assert itself Military still hold a tight gripe on politics and the economy of the country. They hold over a quarter of parliament seats, key position in institutions and administrations, as well as a veto for any constitutional changes. Population longs for a real change but lack, for now, political upbringing to understand the complexity of the issues the new government will have to face. The election represents a major shift, but first and foremost, the first step towards democratic transition. They will be able to do some change, but um, I don't expect many change that they will be able to do within these five years. So, but at least if they, they, they start change, they, start, they pave the way to the change, then it is okay.